All right, we're going to have a conversation here about something that uh, we'll see. We'll see if this affects the plans to get the border reopened. Uh, We've talked about it a couple times on the show. Um, Border workers in our country have voted to strike as early as August 6th. Remember, the border is supposed to reopen August 9th to American travelers. So let's get some details on exactly what the situation is here. We have Rick Savage joining us now. Rick is the Customs and Immigration Union First National Vice President. Uh, Rick, thanks for your time today. Appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Thanks for having me. So just the current situation we're in, you guys put it to the membership for a strike vote, and they have approved strike action August 6th. Do I have that right? Uh, yes, we had the uh, the strike vote had been going on for the last month and a half, and we finalized it just a few days ago with a strong mandate to uh, to strike if need be. Okay, um, what are the issues? What are the problems here? Um, you guys have been without a contract for three years, right? This has been going on for a while. <laughs> yes, this is not something new. It's uh, the government has uh, not really been uh, forthcoming with our negotiations for the last three years. So we brought it down to there's basically three areas uh, where we're having kind of the sticking points. One is uh, we're looking for wage parity with the general, with the general law enforcement community. Uh, two, and this one is, is, is actually much more important to me than, it, than, than even the wage, which is we're looking for better protections from our members from the toxic workplace and the harassment that we face uh, from our management at the CBSA. And the final one is, 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 a, is a surprising one to me because we're, we're also looking to enshrine in our contract protections for people, or not protections, for people to be able to work from home and as we've all seen for the last year and a half um it, it's uh it's possible and it's productive that obviously is not for our frontline workers sure, right those would be, those would be for the, the workers that could uh work from home so those are the kind of the three main sticking points that we're having with the employer right now how far is the gap like when you talk about wage parity with other law enforcement officials how big of a difference are we looking at making up here uh, it's not that. It's not that. That uh, the numbers. Uh, I don't have the numbers in my in front of me at the moment. Uh, it's not that big of a gap at the moment. We did increase significantly in our last contract, but we are all we are always looking to, uh, to to be on the average of what law enforcement members are paid across Canada. Um, when we take a look at the other issue, you know, harassment from people within the uh, the forces. It how does that work with? The employer. I mean, what what are you asking them to do in terms of putting in a framework, putting in a reporting system, being harder on the perpetrators? What are you looking for exactly? We're actually just looking for protections within our contract. If you look at our contract, harassment is not even mentioned. It is specific to only to sexual harassment. So for okay. workplace violence or bullies or anything like that, that is not in our contract. So we're looking for better language to within the contract to enshrine it within the, for our members. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, what's the status of negotiations? Are there any planned between now and next Friday? We are actually back at the table uh, as of yesterday. Okay. And negotiations are ongoing today, and I believe they will be ongoing as well. I don't know if we're going through the weekend or if we're going back on the 3rd, but I do know that we're back at the table now. Okay. In terms of the strike action on the 6th, is that happening or is that threatened if negotiations don't go well between now and then is it a set date that this is going to happen or you're just allowed to do it on that time that is the time that we will be allowed to do any sort of job action so it's not necessarily going to be a general strike there's a lot of things that we can do uh with with our strike mandate uh for example the collection of duties and taxes has not been deemed to be an essential portion of our job so that we would not be assessing or collecting duties and taxes in the commercial mode that you could end up costing I think the last figure I saw was $87 million a day for the government. So, okay. so there's issues that we can do without actually doing a general strike. Um, obviously, what the impact would be huge if you decided to walk out on the 6th with um, vaccinated Americans allowed to cross the border starting August 9th, right? That would be a, a huge issue. It would be, uh, it, yes. However, you do have to keep in mind that our members are, we do have essentials. We are essential workers, so even in a general strike, the borders would not be closed. Right, yeah. They would just be facing more delays, yes. Exactly, that's the whole thing. The whole system would be delayed in in, in, uh, in effort. Okay, Rick, yes. I appreciate the insight. Thank you very much. No problem, thanks for having me. You bet. That is Rick Savage, anyway. who is the Customs and Immigration Union First National Vice President. So you got three issues they want to deal with there. They want wage parity, and they want some protection in the language in terms of harassment in the workplace. So.